So in light of the release of my highly anticipated Wow Factor Vocals 3.0 program, which came out this week, today's video is gonna be a little different than normal. We're not gonna be inside of a DAW and doing the normal, you know, walking through some different production stuff or mixing stuff. And instead, today we're gonna focus a bit more on the psychological side of making music, specifically when it comes to singing and recording vocals. So today what I wanna share with you is a very important law that you and I need to know. We have to know this and we have to live this and this has to be present in our vocals if we want to have good sounding vocals and I'm going to share the law with you and then we'll dive into it and we'll unpack it from there. So here is the law that every singer and every mixer and everybody who does anything with vocals absolutely has to abide by and that law is this. Be bold with every decision you make the moment you sound insecure it's over. Now, those of you watching this who have read Robert Greene's incredible book, The 48 Laws of Power, then you can probably already sense the inspiration coming from that book. And that is very much true. I recently did a deep dive into the book and I learned so much about life, about power, what it is, what it's not, and, and how that applies to so many different areas of life. And one of those areas that power applies to and that it's helpful for us to know about is of course making music, recording vocals, anything that has to do with music power is part of the game and one of those laws if you want your vocals to sound powerful to, to have an impact is you have to be bold in the delivery and with every part of the process every mixing decision every production recording decision every decision you make as you're singing you, you know if it's a live performance it has to be wrapped in boldness it has to come from a place of boldness again the law is be bold with every decision you make. The moment you sound insecure, it's over. And we have all heard singers who break this law and we don't like them. We don't like any of them, right? Think about any open mic you've been to, any time you've listened to a song, any time that you've been to a concert and you just felt like the singer just wasn't, didn't believe in themselves, right? You felt like they were releasing this emotion of timidity. It felt like they were backing off, like they weren't presenting themselves with boldness. And nothing, nothing drives you away faster as a listener than that, than timidity. We hate listening to vocals that sound timid. And so we have to, as producers, as recording engineers in our home studios, in our bedroom, whatever our setup is, we have to commit to no matter what we're doing, no matter how confident or unconfident I feel, I have no choice. You never really have a choice except to be bold with everything that you do, because otherwise you're done. There's no moving forward. It's a brick wall. Timidity is a brick wall. So Robert Greene talks about this in one of the laws in the 48 Laws of Power that inspired this, this video. And one of the laws is interaction with boldness. That is the name of the law. And there's a quote from that chapter, which is really insightful. And it goes like this, quote, any mistakes you commit through audacity are easily corrected with more audacity. Everyone admires the bold, no one honors the timid. And again, as soon as we hear this, we immediately want to stop listening to the song, whether it's headphones, whether it's at an open mic, whether it's live at a concert, we cannot stand listening to a vocal that doesn't sound bold, that feels unconfident and that feels timid. But here's the kicker. The reverse is also true. There is nothing that makes us want to keep listening to a vocal than when it has that boldness, than when they are just letting it all out. They are just giving it everything they have. There's something about that type of boldness that is so compelling and that pulls you in. It makes you wanna keep listening. It engages you. And this again applies to not only the singer and the singing and the vocal performance, but also if it's a production and a mix, the moves that are made, maybe a lot of distortion if it fits the song or a lot of reverb, like more than normal, just because it sounds good for that particular song. Everything is boldness. Everything is like, I like that, I'm gonna lean into it. I like this, I'm gonna lean into it. I like doing this type of, of weird move or lick or sound and it just, you, they lean into it and that boldness pulls you in. It makes you wanna keep listening. I mean, just go to Spotify, open up whatever music player app you use, scroll through the artists a little bit that you listen to and tell me one artist 
one band, one act, one anything of any song that you add to playlists that you like, that you listen to, and tell me one time when there is a lack of boldness. You're not gonna find it because you always skip those songs that sound timid. You don't like them, I don't like them. And to make this even more clear, just think of an artist like Taylor Swift. Love Taylor or hate Taylor. You cannot deny how bold she is with everything she does. Every song she writes, every song she releases, every move she makes, every business move she makes, everything she does, it's wrapped in boldness. No matter what you say about Taylor Swift, nobody in their right mind can look at her and say she's timid in how she goes about her business, in how she writes her songs, in how she sings her songs. Everything comes from a place of boldness. And this is true for every artist, every band that you and I have ever loved. And going all the way back to the iconic bands and artists of the past, like the Beatles, Michael Jackson, Elvis, all of them exude that boldness, that confidence. It's just a law that you can run away from. No matter what, you have to be bold. And now, let me mention this, because I think this is very important, what I'm about to say. You might think that, well, that's not really my personality. I'm more of a timid personality. I don't, I'm just not that naturally confident. I'm more of a chill, introverted type of person. Well, if that's you, you can still be very, very bold. Boldness comes in lots of different sizes and shapes. And so just because you're more of a chill, introverted type of person, which that's me, by the way, I'm at least introverted. I'm not sure how chill I am, but I'm definitely introverted. And so I totally understand that feeling of like, um, I, I don't have as much of that natural extroversion, that natural charisma, as far as being very theatrical and being very animated with everything that I do. But you can still be very bold coming from a, a more chill place. I mean, some of my favorite singer-songwriters, think of guys like Noah Gunderson, John Mayer, um, Phoebe Bridgers. These artists aren't doing crazy, you know, hip thrusts and wild things on stage and just drawing your attention by doing crazy things or very, very attention drawing things. No, they're just chill in their confidence. They're chill with their boldness, but it's still boldness. And this idea of being timid versus being bold is of course far from being only applicable to music. It applies to everything. I mean, think about, so if you're a female and I'm trying to take you on a date, how successful do you think I would be if I walk up to you in this timid, like, hey, how's how, how's it going? Um, um, I know you're probably gonna say no to this and and that's okay. Like, I don't I don't wanna bother you. You know, everything's fine. Um, is, is it okay if I ask you a question? Uh, okay, okay. Can I, uh, would you be okay with maybe, and I know this is crazy and I don't really know you that way. Like, Jesus Christ, right? That's, that's never gonna work, ever. But here's the thing. So many singers sing like that and it just comes through so, it's so easy to feel. You feel it immediately and you skip the song immediately. Now there's one final problem that we need to unpack here before we end this video. And that is the problem of should you fake boldness? Should you fake confidence if you don't feel that confident? What if you don't feel bold? What if you don't feel like you're skilled enough? What if you don't feel like you actually have boldness to give. And there are a lot of different directions we could take this, but I would say on, on the one hand, there are times when yes, you kind of need to fake boldness a little bit and that's okay. Because again, timidity is running into a brick wall. You're done. Like that's, that's a non-starter. So you can't be timid. You can't sound insecure when you're singing, when you're performing live, when you're recording. That is just a no-go, you can't do it. And so there are times when you do need to fake that boldness, if you will. But that can be a very difficult strategy to perpetuate every day for months and months and years and years. Uh, if there isn't a true level of skill, a true level of competence that is underneath that. And so this is why you need to build your skills. 
It's really that simple. You need to build your skills. And this is exactly why my Wow Factor Vocals 3.0 program, it just came out. This is literally everything that I have learned from the past 10 years of learning about singing, learning about vocal production, learning about mixing. I've synthesized everything that I know and everything that I've learned and I've put it all into one program. If you want sustained boldness, sustained confidence, sustained competence, then you need a plan. You need a system in place. You need to be able to actually develop these skills so that you don't run out of boldness. Because otherwise, if you only fake it, if that's all you do, at some point you're gonna run out of gas, so to speak. So if you're watching on YouTube, I'll leave a link in the description below. So be sure to check it out if you're ready to transform your vocals, take them to a whole nother level, and just have an entire system in place from singing to recording, to editing, to production, to mixing, to some extra bonus stuff as well. It's all there. Plus, if you join the program within the first week during launch week, then you can get the program for $100 off. So if you're watching this within the first couple days of it being released, there's probably still some time left for you to go grab it at $100 off normal price. And so again, I'll leave a link in the description below. Be sure to at least go check it out and see if it might be a good fit for you. Because again, as I've been talking about throughout this video, you need boldness, but at some point, the boldness is gonna run out and you need the skills, you need the systems in place, you need the competence in your singing abilities, in your recording abilities, in your ability to mix your vocals well. You need to have these skills and that's why this program is gonna be so helpful for you. So it's Wow Factor Vocals 3.0. I hope to see you on the inside.